These last couple of months have been interesting sim racing wise. We've seen the hobby change from something that only nerds did to being broadcasted everywhere, including national televisions, while being raced by well-known professional drivers. None of the sim racing titles has received more coverage than iRacing as the lion's share of high-level broadcasts has been with it. However, with all of the real-life drivers coming into iRacing and driving it for a huge amount of people, a few massive kinks in the armor have appeared. All of this starts with the iRacing tire model. It has been something always criticized over the years. Though, there always has been a community pushback against any criticism of it or any criticism to the iRacing platform for that matter. As iRacing is THE competitive sim racing title, it could always afford to not change aspects of its platform, as it never really had competition from other titles. Other sim racing titles might have multiplayer, but not a deep competitive multiplayer as iRacing has. This lack of need of change due to their position in the market is not only exclusive to the tire model, but it's through the tire model that events have started to move. So with the lockdown, uh, lots of pro drivers came to drive and stream iRacing for sim racing veterans and newcomers to the sim racing genre alike. All of them came into contact with a tire model and physics package which they found to be unforgiving, unable to deal with slip angles past a certain threshold with no room for overdriving and so on, at least when compared to the comparable cars they drive in real life. This criticism is a new challenge to iRacing, with a significant number of pro drivers absolutely blasting the driving fundamentals of the game, there has been talk some alleged censorship in the forums, drivers dissatisfied with the product, either that to the business model or something else, and also a number of previous customers coming out of the world work chiming in. That means a lot of consumers want an alternative to iRacing. In the time leading to the launch of Assetto Corsa Competizione, I was someone that actively criticized a few aspects of the development of this title. One of the main points was the lack of matchmaking and competitive matchmaking. Kunos did implement their type of competitive matchmaking, but it lacks in depth and width to properly capture the market. A market that now more than ever wants and is actively looking for an alternative to iRacing. But can Assetto Competizione rise up to the challenge and what needs to be done to do so? In my opinion, the base work of competitive gameplay is already done, Matchmaking works, the ratings do more or less their job, they just need a little bit tweaking in my opinion. The scope of matchmaking is really small though. Only a few races per day, only one type of race per slot, only a few geographical areas covered as apparently Oceania does have problems accessing the races. So there's not enough scope, not enough options and in my opinion not enough integration with SRO. As such. Assetto Corsa Competizione does need more race slots. In some cases it's necessary to wait some 8 hours to be able to register to a race, or in the case you are driving in prime time you might need to wait 2 or 3 hours until you are able to register. Not only more races are needed, but more choices of races that could follow somewhat the daily race format in Gran Turismo Sport. Maybe 2 or 3 race choices following a schedule, with a sprint race and a couple of longer ones that could go up to 2 hours so you could have tactics and you can refuel and such. Or even maybe one of the slots would be a Porsche Cup race, which is an excellent piece of content but not used as much as it could. Assetto Corsa Competizione also loses the opportunity by not providing special races every so often, like races that follow the format or schedule of the SRO Championship, it would be great that every month or every two months to have a big race event that was more endurance related and felt a bit more special instead of the cookie cutter format we get at the moment. One last idea is that it could be some sort of SRO championship integration in the platform. If you don't follow SRO or set of courses social media, it would be unlikely that you'd know about these events or how to join them. It's necessary to go to a web page, register and follow instructions. Compared to iRacing's or even GT Sports methods, which have these events promoted with the option to register to the qualifier or the events themselves in-platform, Assetto Course's method is greatly archaic. 
I've always said that Assetto Corsica Competizione has huge potential, but on this day and age, a sim is just much more than a driving platform. To effectively capture a market, it needs to have features, otherwise it gets stale and it gets boring. Our racing was able to get away with a lot for over 10 years. That includes a pricing model that can reach to over a thousand dollars in purchases and a tire model that is lesser than ACC. But it has the killer feature and that's enough at the moment. Assetto Corsa Competizione doesn't need a copy of the iRacing model. However, like I've stated many times, a more comprehensive platform would capture definitely more drivers and now the opportunity is at hand. Sometimes it's not only hindsight that is 2020. But let me know in the comments what you think. Maybe some ideas could be listened to and improve Assetto Corsa Competizione. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.